up the hill. And what are we gonna have up here? Ooh, just a beautiful, oh, this is this beautiful country out here. <laughs> I absolutely love Western Arizona, guys. I mean, it is just, it's absolutely magnificent. Well, hey, everybody, welcome back. So, um, first things first, I, I wanted to say thank you so much for uh, putting in a bid on the Long Crystal Galena. Uh, I do appreciate that. And I'm going to have more of that available in the coming weeks. But first things first, uh, this week we've got to bounce back to the um, to the pyrite, as I promised. So uh, that's what's that's what's going on this week. We're back into pyrite mode, and uh, this listing is going to keep going until uh, next week, Friday, uh, six or seven days. Yeah. Okay. So what do I have for you today? Well, there's a story behind. Um, behind today's adventure. Let me tell you a little bit about it. First things first, though. So yesterday, I headed out to this location that was going to be super cool. I mean, you guys would have absolutely loved it. it it's just it's just over the top. It, it's literally like exploring abandoned mines on Mars. That's how cool the topography is. So I was super excited to get out there. I knew that I could probably get about maybe two or even three episodes out of the area. And I got about three quarters of the way there only to find out that this weekend they're holding the uh, Parker Dam 500 Baja race. <laughs> so I got out there and there's there's flags and people and trucks and side by oh my gosh it, it looked like a darn circus out there and of course they had all the roads closed so um i mean the, the road that i needed to get to that site was literally part of the track so i had to turn around and go after plan b and that's what we're doing today but this is pretty neat too let me tell you a little bit about it so uh about two years ago i was out here and what we've got is a mill site. Now, at the time when I was reconning this area, I, I didn't turn the cameras on for this. I flew the drone for a brief moment just to kind of get a lay of the land. Uh, but I never, I never turned on the cameras. I actually walked around. Nor did I have the recon drone that I have now to to really explore this site well. But when I got here. Um, I knew that uh, that, there, that the one shaft is it's an incline shaft. It's 700 feet deep. But here's the problem: uh, as I walked up to the portal, bees and a lot of them. And uh, so I don't know how big the hive was, but they were coming in and out of that portal by the hundreds, if not the thousands. And then the funny thing: a funny thing happened when I got back into Bob, um, I, I slammed the door, I made a big noise, I don't know what exactly I did, all of a sudden those bees started bouncing off of Bob as if they were attacking him. They were bouncing off the windshield, bouncing off the doors, I had my windows rolled up, so that tells me that there's a good chance that they could have been uh, Africanized bees, because we all know how aggressive they can get. So, that's why I wasn't able to get into the portal, because it was filled with killer bees. <laughs> so, um, here we are, a little over two years later, going back to the same location, and I'm hoping, let's cross our fingers, that maybe the bees moved on and found a new home. We'll just have to see what happens. So the plan for today is, is to get up to the site, get the drone up in the air, and uh, first get a good look at this thing, then we'll start reconning it, and I'm gonna use the drone to fly right up to the portal <laughs> to see if we can uh, puree some bees with the rotors of my drone. <laughs> I figure that's the, safe, the safest way to, take a, to get a closer look at the portal without getting stung to death. Okay, all right, so when I get up here, I'll get the big drone up in the air, and we'll start taking a look at this puppy. Okay, I'll see you up there.
Okay guys, there we go. I got the drone up in the air. Now let's get a closer look at this mill site now that I've given you a nice big overview with the big drone. Let's head on out here and see what we can see. Okay, I'll tell you what, before we go over to the portal where all the bees are, <laughs> let's uh, first get a good look at the mill site. Down here we have a tail, you can see the tails, there's all the fine tails. Notice the difference between tails and waste rock. Tails are going to look just like that. And then waste rock is higher up on the hill. This is material that, that uh, was ran through the mill site and processed. And uh, after all the goodies were extracted from it, then it just sits here to this very day. Now, of course, uh, the building has been removed. Um, anything that made out of metal or tin has all been scrapped or repurposed. Uh, the thing you're seeing right down there in the bottom where those uh, concrete, uh, what do we, what, what would you call those? Let's just, let's just call them a standoff. So what you had there was a big tank sat right here and that tank was used uh, for the cyanide leaching process. The tank is gone now, leaving behind the uh, standoffs that it was uh, sitting on. All right, let's get a little closer here. We'll go up to our first level. Let's get down in here and see if we can see any goodies lying around. Yeah, every single mill site is a little bit different, um, but they do have a lot of things that are in common. And I'm gonna show you those things here in just a moment. This here was probably a sump of some kind. Let's look down in it. Yep, that's a sump. And let's look over here. Here's all our pylons with the with the bolts coming out. And it looks like after they got done scrapping this out, then they, they took all the bolts and bent them over. Well, at least most of them anyways, not all of them. But down here, you would have had your uh, finishing tables on this level. Whereas higher up, you're going to have all of your, um, your ball mills or stamp mills higher up in the process. So right through here, this is where you're going to have your ball mills sitting on all of these pylons and then higher up this is where you're going to have your stamp mills. Now I'm not sure of the age of this mill site, um, but it, is, it isn't looking like late 1800s, it's looking like maybe 1930s, 1920s. It's, it's not that old. Let's get off over this direction here. We're going to come at it from a little different angle. Looks like they had another tank. Yeah, they had lots of tanks on this one. There was one sitting right here, and there's probably another one sitting up top. The reason for that is there's, there's no water out here, so uh, wherever they were getting their water from, they had to put it in those big storage tanks in order to use it for processing the ore. Let's kind of get off this direction here. Just a beautiful sight out there in the desert. What a beautiful day in uh, western Arizona. Off here to the right, you can see a pile of rocks down there in the lower right-hand corner. Um, that probably was uh, one of their corners to the mine. Um, these days, people use PVC pipe or a 4x4 post. But back in those days, a, a pile of rock is all you really needed. Okay. Let's look at it from this angle. Let's see what we have down in here. What was this thing? Interesting. Yeah, one can only guess what that sump was used for. Looks like they had a pipe going into it and in that corner right there. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's look around here some more. And then uh, we'll head on over to our bees. Lots of people have been out here. Look at all of the the graffiti that people have used. These used stones and whatnot to mark their name in the sides of the of the wall there. Yeah, this is a pretty 
well-known location for uh, 4x4 enthusiasts. Side-by-side -side people, Jeep people, it's, it's a waypoint on all of the local maps. Um, but for those of you who have never been out here before, eh, it's pretty neat. All right, time to head over to the portal. I think we got a pretty good look at the mill. Now, look at the amount of material that they were bringing out of the mine here. Everything we're flying over the top of right now is all waste rock. So at one time they had uh, cross ties and rails and rail heading out this direction. All that's been removed now. And then uh, here's your primary waste rock pile right here that was coming out of the actual mine. All right, this is gonna get really interesting because if our little buzzy bee friends are still here, they're, they're probably not gonna like the sound of this drone. But uh, this is where they were hiding the last time I was out here, so let's get a better look at this incline shaft. It'll fly right over the top of the fence. And let's get kind of peek down in there. Let's see if anything's gonna come buzzing out at us, huh? I'm not seeing any yet. Oh, oh, there's one. Oh yeah, there's one. Any more? I saw one come out of there, at least I thought it might have been one. Definitely an incline shaft. No, no bees this time. Let's get out of there. All right, <laughs> we got another one over here. Any bees hiding over in this one? Boy, they were just pouring out of that the last time I was here. But they do migrate. So they, maybe they moved on. Now, last time I was here, this little hole was all filled with water. It looks like it still might be. We'll get a better look at it when we get over there. All right, let's gain some altitude here. We got 53% left on our drone battery. I want to look around the corner. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a second. We got something else here. What's this? What's this? We got something. Oh, yeah, just a just a prospect. That's all that is. Okay. I thought I saw some waste rock piles around the corner here. We've got a little trail heading off this direction. Let's see if we can uh, see what's going on over here. Yep, I can see a miner's trail. You see, see it, guys? Right there, we're going up the side of the hill. We've got some workings over here. And indeed, look at there. We've got ourselves one right there. Yep. Well, I think we're going to have to walk over there and get a closer look at that one. Anything higher up on the hill? I'm not seeing anything higher on the hill. But across the way, let's look over there. There we've got something. Let's go get a look at that. Look at how they built the rock so that they could uh, to, to, to build that trail to the mine. Yeah, indeed, we've got one over here we can poke our heads into. Very nice. Okay, now let's turn around here and look back this direction. Okay, guys, I tell you what, I'm going to go land this drone. I think we've got a nice overview of what's going on. We'll take a closer look at the main portal, uh, see if it's something that we can maybe get into safely and uh, just start poking around this site and see what we can find. Okay guys, I'll be back. All right guys, all suited up, ready to go. Let's explore this old mine. Okay, here we go. Let me just kind of pan around here for a second so I can orientate you guys. So a moment ago, we were down there in the bottom, right over there. 
I took the road to the left, kind of circled up this direction. The mill site's off that direction. Good old Bob sitting right there today. And here we have our mine. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm a little nervous. I'm going to be quite honest with you guys. I'm a little nervous right now because, boy, were those bees ever boiling out of this thing two years ago. So first things first, as always, let's get some light on the situation here. There we go. There we go. Okay. We'll get past our uh, velvet rope and take a look. All right, first of all. Let's just stop for a second, see if we've got any coming out of here. So far, so good. Okay, not seeing any. Oh, I just got hit by the smell. Oh, nasty. Nope, no bees, No, nothing so far. All right. Oh, the stink. Oh, the guano is terrible. Oh. <laughs> All right, let's look around in here real quick. Well, I might not get stung by bees today, but maybe I'll get a good healthy dose of histoplasmosis, huh? All right, before we go any deeper here, I'm gonna look around and see if we can find our hive. Well, we've got some, there were some mud wasps in here. See that right there? Those are mud wasps. There's a bird's nest right there. Let's look up this direction because that hive couldn't have been in here very far. Let's look straight up. There's more mud wasps nests. Nope, those aren't, aren't our bees. I'm not seeing the hive. What do we got going off this direction? Let's look up there. No way of getting to it. Uh, I'm not putting my weight on those boards. No way. Is the hive around the corner up over here maybe? No. Yeah, I'm being real cautious. Boy, you, you, you've seen how fast those things can get on you. All right. Well, let's get down here. I don't want to kick up dust because this is a really batty mine. Boy, does it stink. It smells like, it smells like hell's butthole in here, guys. I'm telling you. Boy, if I could just bring some of this stink through your screens right now so that you guys can enjoy it. Ah, the, most of you would turn back. It is really, it is really nasty. I just saw a bat. There's a bat. All right, let's keep going here. We'll just take it real slow. Try not to kick up dust. So histoplasmosis comes from a fungus that grows off of the, the bat guano. <clears throat> and uh, once you make it airborne, the particulates come up, get into your lungs and cause symptoms like pneumonia. It's just not good. If you got a healthy immune system, you can uh, usually be okay, but it's just not good. All right, stop for a second here. What do we got down there? I'm just seeing bats all over the place. Boy, does this stink. All right. Oh, we got a cross cut here or a drift. Yeah. Okay, stop here a second. <laughs> Let's look down there. Interesting. Well, isn't that interesting? Huh. All nice hard rock. Yeah. All right. Turning around here. What do we got going off this way? Mm hmm. Oh, look, you can see. You see where the wheels? were this is part of the uh the skip that was being drawn up and down out of this out of this shaft see an axle and the wheels went here and right there 
and on top of it was your skip. Let me turn around here and get a better look at it. Yep. But all that's been taken now and the framework of it has been set aside. All right, turn it around. What do they have up in here? Boy, yeah. You know, every year I come back to Arizona and then I forget just how stinky some of these mines are. Because up in Nevada, you don't, it's not usually like this. And uh, it's hot in here. It's very warm. I mean, we're, it's like in the 70s. Yeah, Mr. Bat. Yeah, I'm not gonna just fly right past me here. All right, what do we have here? 1958, huh? Turn the light down a second. Can you guys read the name? Right there. Well, that's as far as this one goes. And I can see all the pickaxe marks in the rock and the various bat roosts around here. Piles of guano all over the floor. Yummy. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Well, and we're starting to put in a raise right here. You can even see all the drill holes. They were going to work their way up and out and stopped right there. Mm -hmm. So now the question is, should we or shouldn't we? I wonder what that white thing is down there. Hmm. I just see a whole bunch of bats and well I gotta set the camera down let's see if I can safely uh, somehow navigate this okay come on now there we go okay here we are well, there sure is a lot of uh, scorching on the back of the mine. Looks like they had a fire down here or somebody set it on fire. See all that charcoal sco scorching? Mm hmm. All right, we're just taking it nice and easy. We got bats all over. Well, not, I've seen it much worse. Oh, it just keeps getting warmer and warmer and stinkier and stinkier, guys. Well, we'll see. We'll see if I go all the way or if I chicken out. <laughs> because of the smell. Right now, it's enough to gag a maggot. Look at all the bats. Hey guys, what are you doing? That bat's all over. Now I did see the map to the workings of this mine and somewhere right down here is where we're gonna find our, uh, um, our stope. There's supposed to be a big stope somewhere in this thing. But the map was kind of contradicting itself. There was some reports that were saying that the, the incline shaft only went down 100 feet and then the map shows 700. So I don't know what to believe. Just have to find out for ourselves, huh? All right, let's stop here. Get a good look around. What do we got going on in this mine? Okay, stop here. First of all, looking up, we've got a raise going up that way, and uh, maybe what's left of a ladder, I'm not quite sure up there, 
but uh, we've got maybe some stoping going on right above us now. Off to my left, we've got one going off that direction. Looks like it just goes and stops with a bunch of bats. And then off to my right, let's turn around here. We got something going that direction. The whole bunch of guano on the floor. And then down below, how much deeper does it go? Let's look. Let's look. Holy cow. Yeah, that's more than 100 feet. Look at all the bats. Look at that, guys. They're down there in the hundreds, if not the thousands. Wow, you see them? Let me get my light pointed perfect. Wow. <laughs> Look at the piles of guano down in there. Unreal. All right, let me get back up here a second. Set the camera down for a moment and turn around. Okay. Get back up this direction. Turn around here. All right, looking back down the shaft, which direction we want to go first? Let's go left. Get past this muck sheet here. A muck sheet, an old piece of vent pipe, more more baddie friends just going like crazy in here look at this this one turned right around holy mackerel look at all the bats over there now you see how they're all uh, all condensed into one spot well then we know that that face is out because if it didn't if those bats had a place to go they'd be going there but they're not so there's no sense in walking up in here across all that guano uh -uh. No need to go all the way up in there and freak out the bats any more than we already are. All right, let's go up in here and hug the wall. We had some prospectors in here. See this? They were in here chipping that out. And I'm pretty sure this is going to face out too. Just, all right, guys, you just stay up there. I'm not coming any further. Yeah, they're already flying past me. All right. That doesn't go anywhere. Looks like we've got a pry bar off to the left right here. See that? That's a scaling bar. Still left in here after all these years for scaling down uh, Widowmakers. All right, turn around. You know, bats have never bothered me. I find them quite adorable, to be quite honest with you. Um, it's, it's their guano that bothers me, and I don't want to get that stuff, that dust in my lungs. If you can remember, uh, Mr. M and I explored one of the nastiest guano mines I have ever been in in my entire life. Guano piles four to, four to six feet deep, uh, but in there we had to wear respirators. If you guys want to go watch that, I will put a link to it down in the description area. It was beyond gross, but I explored the whole darn thing. Look at the guano in here. All right, I'm just going to step real cautiously and softly. I'm sinking in about two inches. You, let's get around the corner here, see what's going on. They've got some rail on the ground there. Oh, God. <coughs> it's bad, guys. It's really bad. Okay. Let's keep going here. Look at this. This made like a complete 90 degree swing all the way around. Where's it going to go? Huh? What's this thing gonna do? It's gotta face out because all the bats are pooling up there. All oh, the ammonia. Oh. oh man. Okay, I know you guys are getting sick and tired of listening to me. 
complain about it, but I am a mine explorer. It's all in the dis job description. There you go. Hey, guys. Oh, you're just all cute as heck. Look at you. <laughs> oh, aren't you just cute? Look at you go. Oh, you're just all cute. Here you go. Yes, yes, yes. Fly right past the camera. Thank you for giving me a good camera shot. That was fun. All right, let's get out of here. I'm already seeing dust floating in the in the uh, uh, flashlight beam. <clears throat> let's get back over here to where some air. I need air. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, well, now we know the answer to the $600,000 question. Was this a hundred footer or was this a 700 footer? And indeed it was a 700. Yep. I ain't going down in that. Uh-uh. Too much guano, too many bats, uh, too much stink, too much urea and everything else. No. No, uh let's look up one more time. Look at them all up in the air. <laughs> Neat. Okay, guys, let's see. I'm going to turn around. I'm going to show you the portal. All right, I'm going to slowly work my way back out of here. And uh, when I get out, outside by Bob, uh, I'll just meet up with you out there, okay? Okay, I'll see you out there. Okay, guys, back outside, safe and sound. Oh, so good to be able to breathe fresh air again. Man, oh man. So, uh, you know, if this would have been like a Nevada mine, on that kind of grade, 700 feet, no problem, you know, with no guano, but the deeper you go into this thing, the more bats you get, the more guano. Now going down is the easy part. What you gotta think about in this, these types of situation is, is the coming back up. When you're going down, you're not you're not breathing heavy because you know you're you're with gravity gravity's helping you go down the shaft but coming back up think about that you're huffing you're puffing you're climbing back out of there bats are swarming all around you they're kicking up dust you're kicking up dust you're taking deep inhales not a good situation so the super super deep depths of this mine are just going to have to remain a mystery unfortunately now there's something else out around here i want to show you real quick um, and tell you about hold on one second let me grab the camera now in the arizona desert if the killer bees don't get you and if the stinky bat guano doesn't get you let me show you what will right over here see it's already starting to come up right there see that plant right there with the little tiny barbs coming out of the stalk that is scorpion weed yes and over here here is some of it that is starting to flower notice the color of the flowers and i'm going to point to another batch of it here there is some right there and there is some right there okay turning around as I'm looking around here it is all over the place here here we go here's some more right there see the flower that is scorpion weed let's get back over here to Bob I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it and what happened to me years ago So, this was about, uh, I'm guessing, four years ago. I was uh, exploring mines. This was the very start of the channel. I was around Parker, Arizona. And Parker and Lake Havasu is notorious for scorpion weed, okay? And, uh, but I'm a, I'm a Wyoming boy. At the time, I didn't know what it was. So, I'm going to these mines and I'm just tromping through all the flowers, you know. It's just a beautiful spring day. It's like, oh, look at all the beautiful flowers tromping through them and 
and uh, and then I went back to the RV that night and uh, took shower and all that stuff and the very next day I was planning on going out to Swansea Arizona where that big copper mine is out there and I did but when I got out there uh, it was really super hot and I was just sweating profusely and uh, what had happened was is all the oils that I had walked through from the day prior okay were still sitting in the on the tongue of my boots on the shoelaces as well as in my socks and in my upper pant leg and the next day when I was at Swansea and I started sweating I, I drew in all of that stuff from the scorpion weed into my ankles and you want to talk about a rash I've been rashed up by poison ivy poison oak okay but I have never in my life gotten a rash as bad as what I did from scorpion weed here I'm gonna show you some pictures take a look at this is that not terrible or what and here's the thing it didn't go away for like two weeks and later on, when I thought that I had gotten rid of it and washed it all out of my clothing, apparently I didn't wash it good enough out of the shoelaces in my boots. So when I went to tie my boots up on the next Explore, I had blisters all up and down my fingers from that stuff. And every time I would pop one, more blisters would break out across my, oh my gosh, I was in pure misery for almost, not quite three weeks unreal so if you ever see that stuff at all costs <laughs> avoid it completely avoid it it's terrible stuff all right now i know that we've got a couple prospects around the corner over here uh, but taking into consideration the size of the waste rock piles they're not going to go in very far so uh be honest with you i really don't feel like climbing up the side of that hill just to walk into a into a prospect that goes in maybe 50 75 feet if there was a giant waste rock pile tailing off of it that's one thing but it's not so i think we've got the overall general idea of this area today you got to see the mill site you got to see the shaft <laughs> down to the point with all the bats and the stinkiness so stay tuned because next weekend is the big one I'm going to take you guys to a place, wow, you're just, it's just, it's over the top. It's absolutely over the top, but I've gridded it out. There's four segments of the entire district that I want to explore. I'm going to hit it and I'm going to do it completely, just really thoroughly. I don't want to miss anything while I'm out there because there's just, there's fantastic workings incredible geology and i'll point all that out to you you guys are just absolutely going to love it so stay tuned for next weekend's episode all right guys i think that's enough for today i'm going to get on out of here and start getting everything ready for that adventure so i appreciate you all coming along don't forget drop down in the description area bid on a super cool specimen of uh of pyrite and uh, if you're interested in a t-shirt or coffee mug or something like that the link to my website is down in the description area too Okay, guys, thanks for coming along, and I'll see you all again next weekend. Okay, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.